No team has ever climbed out of a 3-0 hole in the 76-year history of the NBA. While the Celtics will still have to take it one game at a time in the truest sense of the cliché in order to accomplish such a feat, the basketball gods may be giving us signs that we're about to see the first ever occurrence of such a comeback take place. There's only one man who can lead Boston both with his leadership and scoring prowess, and that's Jason Tatum. But simultaneously, there's only one question I personally have to ask about JT's consistency, which I got the privilege of asking him about in person. Take a listen. Are you by poker? I'm by winning. Win there, win there, win, win, everywhere, where, absolute victory, everywhere, where, where, I'm on a quest. We're gonna win everywhere. Right every single wrong. Right every wrong. I'm a total freaking rock star from Mars. Bidding, come on, bro. I got tackle blood. Bidding, you bottle my brain and be like, dude, can't handle it. Win there, win there, win, win, everywhere. In other news, Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown warn the opposing Heat coming into Game 4, quote-unquote, don't let us win one, after taking the fourth game of this series to trim their deficit to two, which was fueled by a 16-0 third-quarter run and championship-esque defense, there's still plenty of room for Smart and Brown to back up those words. But here was Smart when asked about that pre-game statement he made during his post-game interview. Uh, Marcus, you and Jalen said a shoot around today, don't, don't let us win one. Obviously just one game, but now what? Now we just gotta go win another. It's all that matters. You know, we take it one game at a time. You know, we understand, you know, um, the, the odds are stacked against us. But uh, we're a team that, that believes in us no matter what, and we just gotta keep going, and all that matters is the next game. Of course, they had lost three straight heading into game four, but really this shouldn't surprise us too much given both what this Missoula-led 57-win ball club accomplished during the regular season and how their best player responds when the C's back is against the wall. To those of whom that are shocked by this Celtic performance, over his last 10 elimination games, Tatum's averaging 30.8 points, 8.7 rebounds, 6.5 assists, 1.2 blocks, and 1.2 steals per game. He's shooting 43% from three-point range in those games. There's no question this man shows up under pressure. Tatum's now scored the most points in the playoffs through the first six years of a career in NBA history. Based off this picture, Tatum doesn't seem worried about this current series deficit and the historical odds being stacked against him the slightest bit. When Jason, I'm humbly one of the best players in the world, Tatum, is both communicating and trusting his individual skill and that of his supporting cast, which is a sparse reality to be fair. In that universe though, the Celtics' chemistry reaches another level as he's able to twist the momentum in his team's favor by bringing everyone together. While Tatum has labeled Udoka as his favorite head coach of all time in the midst of Missoula's rookie year as the man in charge, from the several years now I've experienced of covering Tatum, albeit from a bird's eye view, that seeming to be slight at Joe is just his way of challenging his unproven man in charge. In the past, Tatum's always thrown out subtle yet thinly veiled challenges to his young teammates, and considering Missoula played a college game against Jimmy Butler and is the youngest coach in the association, I mean it when I say this type of verbiage regarding the former head coach of this team is meant to be taken as a challenge by the current one, if that makes sense. But moving on, and Marcus Wicked Smarts had a performance as tasteful as his cereal, as the DPOY was a game third best plus 15, and while he could shoot better than 4 for 11 from the field, the shots Smart made I thought were timely ones, or should I say, wicked ones. On a separate note, Grant Williams should have never been out of the rotation, as Batman exacted partial revenge on the butler by disrespectfully swatting his jumper in the final frame. Off the pine, Grant finished with 14 points, 4 triples, to go along with a steal and that aforementioned block. Al Horford, meanwhile, most definitely turned the barbecue on for this one, racking up 12 points, 4 dimes, and 7 boards, most prominently being a game-high plus 23. Whether it's Horford's foot speed or all-around attention to detail in the leadership department, or his offensive awareness in terms of him trusting the four other guys around him at any given time, that makes Boston tough to beat once, let alone four times out of seven. If all those boxes are checked, and Horford's making his shots from deep range, 
The Godfather is the very X factor making these Celtics a championship caliber opponent. Boston played some of the best defense of any team in these entire playoffs in Game 4, holding Miami to 8 for 32 shooting from 3 point range, equating to the 19th worst percentage in a game during the 2023 postseason. Early, the Celtics had a mix between Derek White and Jason Tatum guarding Butler. At times, you had Smart matching up with him, but Missoula would make the in-game adjustment to put Jalen Brown on Jimmy for the fourth quarter and that worked to stifle his cadency. JB was doing an exceptional job at scoping out Butler's tendencies in terms of reading and cutting off his driving lanes, and displaying both elite lateral quickness and stick to to complete defensive possessions. Potentially based off that adjustment, Chuck just couldn't wait to go bet on the Celtics for Game 5. I cannot get to the uh, fan duel quick enough. Let's with same game parlays on FanDuel, you can bet on how your favorite players will do. I wish fans could have bet on my favorite player, Young Chuck, hey. my man. <laughs> I'm not sure if Chuck betting on them is a great sign or not, but I do know this Missoula playset after subbing Tatum back in a few minutes into the fourth quarter is a good sign for the C's offensive flow. This after timeout dive Spain action sees Horford set the on ball for White, Al dive to the strong side wing, Tatum set the pin down for Al to get Bam switched onto him, then Jason pops out to receive the entry pass from Grant, and he has all the space in the world for a 1-2 step catch and release. That play was followed by Derek White blocking Duncan Robinson on a 3 point attempt, which led to a Jalen Brown poster. That spurt culminated in a 9-0 run to extend the Celtic lead to 14, forcing a Miami timeout, and Boston would just cruise from there. Eerily, former New York Yankee legends Alex Rodriguez and Derek Jeter were both in attendance for this Miami Heat home game. Reason that's noteworthy is, those two guys were both a part of the 2004 New York Yankees team that was the first in MLB history to blow a 3-0 series lead. So was that a sign from the basketball gods that Boston is about to do the same thing in the NBA, but to Miami? We shall see. It's just one win. But if the Celtics opt to really dig in in terms of buying in to taking it one game at a time, then they could really get themselves back in this series. A massive key will be the focus, mental fortitude, and general free-flowing confidence they can generate on their deep-range shots collectively, because in the Celtics' last 14 games, they're 7-1 when they make 15 plus threes, while they're 0-6 when they don't. Regarding taking it one game at a time, Tatum may have read this video script before his post-game interview. Yeah, we just, uh, you know, everybody was in good spirits, right? Everybody was upbeat. Uh, and, you know, as cliche as it sounds, you know, we just tried to take it one game at a time. You know, we tried to break it down. Of, uh, you know, we, we didn't play well those first three games. We didn't deserve the win. Um, but, you know, we didn't want that to define us, define the season. Um, and we still got a long uphill battle to go. Uh, but tonight was a good start, right? And, uh, you know, we just try to carry this momentum towards Thursday. Bottom line is, Smart and Brown's statement to the Heat leading up to Game 4 may have been matched with a win. But if they don't act on that statement even further by completing the comeback, they're going to get clowned on social media. Again, we shall see what happens. If you enjoyed that video, please subscribe and turn on notifications to stay fully updated on whenever I upload. Thank you gracefully for any bit of support, and peace.